So today I'm gonna to show you how I set my kitchen up and my equipment to film these cooking YouTube videos with multiple camera angles, which is really helpful if you're trying to cook and film at the same time. Now a couple of people who are starting cooking channels have asked me about this lately, so I thought it was just easier really to produce a video for them. But if you've landed here looking for my regular content, then I hope you find the behind the scenes interesting. Now, I know I'm no Peter McKinnon, but I do hope that I've learned enough to produce good quality videos for you to watch. But if any of you have got any suggestions or advice, then I'm always open to ideas. Let me know in the comments. Now, if you are looking to start a channel or just film yourself cook, then I would say one thing. Don't just think about the equipment that you need now. Think about what you might need to grow into because your investment in time now is gonna save you money down the road. You don't wanna be buying equipment quickly and rushing now and then having to replace it in a couple of months because your needs have changed. So think about that carefully. And secondly, don't let equipment stop you filming. My first video I filmed with an old piece of wood as the workbench, a Canon M50, and a 20 quid cheap video light. So don't let equipment stop you. Hit record and have some fun. Now in case you haven't noticed, I've got rather a small kitchen, so I need to be really organized in the way I set things up so I'm not tripping over gear. And my first job, so I don't forget, is to set the undercovered lights, which are Philips Hue, to the energized setting and then turn the brightness down to 50 so they're not glaringly bright. Now this top-down rig was the best investment I made, both in money and also the time it took me to research. I've got zero space on the floor here when everything's set up, so I needed to be able to get a rig to look down at my bench without taking up any floor space at all. So if you've got a tight space in your kitchen, you're gonna find this helpful. Now I use a 2.7 meter Manfrotto auto pole to span between the two walls. It's got a clever spring system which allows it to clamp there safely. And then I can hang my lights, my microphone, or my camera off of it. Now I think it's rated to 1.8 kilos. But if I was to go back in time, then I would look to get the 3.7 meter pole because it just gives you that extra distance to work with. Now to that pole, I clamp two Manfrotto super clamps that are joined together by a joining stud. Now you can attach many things to these super clamps, but I use them to give myself a vertical pole, which is a newer 60 centimeter ceiling pole. And I've just taken off the end plate. Now that just gives me that vertical top down rig that I can move around into any position. And then at the end, I just connect a Manfrotto camera plate. Now at the end of that, I connect a ball head ready to receive the camera. Now if you're gonna be shooting with multiple camera angles, this is probably one of the best bits of advice I can give you. Use the same system throughout. So I've basically bought four of these newer ball head mounts and I connect the ball heads to my tripods and things like that. And then I connect the plates to all of my different cameras. And that means that I can change the cameras between the different tripods or mounting systems without having to mess around. This is a real time saver and makes it super slick when you're trying to film. Now I'm gonna say it again, the best thing about this overhead system is that it's fully adjustable and takes up no space on the floor. So again, if you're looking for space saving solutions, this is one to look into. Now when when I first set this up, I had to watch multiple different videos to work out what I needed and not being a techie, I didn't understand how everything connected together. So if you're looking to do it, then click on the link in the website and I've got a page over there where I explain everything that I've used and how they connect together and that links to the products. So now we're gonna move on to my key light. Again, no space on the floor to be putting tripods or stuff, so I needed to get it up high and out the way, so I mounted a light plate to the ceiling. Now my ceiling's plasterboard, so I just connected it with drywall fittings, and when the kitchen was renovated, I got the electrician to put an electrical socket up high, so I didn't have any trailing electrical cables anywhere. So to this, I mount my key light, which is the Godox SL60. It's a 60 watt LED video light. Now it's definitely on the budget end, but I've had it for about a year and a half now, and it's been fantastic. I've had no problems with it at all. If I was to go back in time and buy this again, I would probably buy the Godox Amaran 200D. It wasn't available when I first bought this light, but it's definitely brighter. And I think if you can have that extra brightness and you may not need it, that's cool. But when you do, you've got it on tap. And then I've got a remote, which makes it really easy to flick on and off or adjust the brightness while I'm filming. Now to the front of this I clip a newer parabolic softbox which obviously just softens the light coming from the 
Godox. Now this is brilliant, it was about 70 quid and it breaks down and puts together really easily. Now everybody always says to me, Phil, what's your bench made out of? Well, it's actually a fake bench, it came from Ikea. Now this is great because it's small enough to fit in the doorways because I store it in the office, but it's also got enough cooking space so I can show you easily what I'm doing. I've got plenty of space to work. I've actually stuck felt pads to the bottom of the legs, to the feet, which means it slides really easily over my floors and I don't have to worry about picking it up. So soon I'm going to be swapping out this fake top for a bespoke handmade kind of wooden butcher's block. At the moment I'm trying to research what wood's good to you, so if you've got any experience then do let me know in the comments. And if you want to see that kind of small construction project and how I changed that then click subscribe and click the little bell. Now this is the first of two Canon M50s I use, they've both got the kit 15 to 45 millimeter lens. They're great little cameras and if I went back in time again and started again I would definitely start with this camera. So I clip that to the newer ball head mount, make sure that the entire bench tops in frame. This camera films in 1080 for this shot and it's great because it gives you guys that top down perspective. So this is my side shot again, Canon M50 shot in 1080p. Now if I could go back in time I would probably upgrade to a 4k full frame camera just so I could have a wider shot and punch in on different aspects of it without losing any quality but that's probably an upgrade that's going to be coming over the next six months or so. So now I'm setting up the Canon R6 with a 24 to 105 millimeter lens that's mounted on a Manfrotto tripod and pushed as far back against the wall as I can possibly get it. Now the Canon R6 films pretty much at full frame at 4k which means even in the small kitchen space I can get everything I need in the main shot. And the great thing about filming in 4k on the R6 is that during editing I can actually punch in and get another camera angle close up. Now I'm going to run you through and show you what those camera angles look like. So this is 4K straight out of the R6 and this is after editing for my first wide shot and now you're looking at that bonus shot that I get up close and personal with the bench. So this is the side angle on the M50 filmed in 1080p shot across the top of that bench. It's pretty much framed up in camera but now you can see the little tweaks I make in editing. So this is the top down straight out of the M50 filmed in 1080p and this is the same shot tweaked during the editing process. Now I film a lot of baking on the channel so that centerpiece, that workbench that I use is really good to have in the center with the three different camera angles looking at it. But if I need to film in the oven, say I'm baking something and I want to give you a shot halfway through, then I dismount the R6 from the tripod and I use it handheld to point into the oven. And if I need the shot to be more stabilized, I pull the bench out of the way and then just pop the tripod there so I've got a good locked off shot. Now if I need to cook something on the heat but I need multiple camera angles and I want you to really be able to see what's going on, then I use a portable gas stove on that bench and film from different angles. But if I've got something that's just ticking away on the stove and you don't need to see too much of what's going on, then I'll do that on the main hob and I'll move the bench out of the way and do a locked off shot on the tripod. Now when the cameras are all set up I hit record and crucially I give a big clap about three times because when I come to edit these I put them all into a multi-cam clip and that clapping means that all of those clips can sync up properly and then when I'm editing I can literally hit a key and I can flick between the different camera angles. So why do I use multiple camera angles? Well I think first of all it helps you to be able to see different angles of what I'm doing and possibly understand a little bit more. Secondly, it really helps me during the editing process when I'm doing a cut, I don't get that jump cut from the same camera angle, I can actually change my camera which means it just looks a bit smoother. And lastly, I think it helps with engagement for you guys. You're not looking at a six, seven or eight minute video from the same camera angle, it just keeps things interesting. Now you may have noticed I've actually moved the recording of the talking headshot to my office. I used to do it in the kitchen but the echo was awful. I even bought extra duvets to lay on the floor and stuff to try and cut it down but it just didn't work. And I also got this difference between the voiceover and the talking headshot in the kitchen. So I've brought everything into the office and hopefully that's improved the sound quality for you guys. Well that's it, that is how I film my YouTube videos. I know I've got a lot to learn but I really hope that this is produced producing good quality content for you guys. And if you've got any questions, then do let me know in the comment section. But for now, a huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Stay tuned.